Yeah, so there's one more command I feel is really, really important, and that's the RHC port forward. Uh, so what we want to do this lesson is I'm going to try and show you how we can actually access the database on OpenShift. So I'm going to do an RHC, and I'm actually just going to do an apps first, because I want the information about the database, about how to log in, the password, the username, all of that, and I can actually see that right here for the, for the course planner. Um, so that was the first step. The next I'll do is I'll write RHC port dash forward and then the name of my application, course planner. I press enter. Now it'll actually open up a port on the OpenShift account so I can connect directly from my local host to that port. Notice that it's trying a few times in my case and it actually found a port now um, <clears throat> right here called 41836. You can see the other ports as well for Node if you wanted to access that directly. I'm just going to focus on the Mongo database in this lesson. So this means that now I can actually access uh, OpenShift directly, uh, my, my Mongo database on OpenShift directly. But I'm going to first of all show you guys another tool than the one I've shown you previously to talk and work with Mongo database and that is actually RoboMongo. I've used this before and I've been really fond of it, but at some point they kind of lost track, so they couldn't, they didn't work anymore. But their newest release candidate, uh, 09 RHC, which I'm using right now, is still free. I don't know if they'll start charging at some point and then I'll probably lose interest again. But right now it's still free and download that and I'll show you how to use RoboMongo um, to actually connect to the OpenShift through this setup that we have right here now. So let me start up RoboMongo. So this is RoboMongo and um, of course you need to install it if you haven't already, but this is the basic setup of RoboMongo. So you should see something like this and um, if you don't have a pop-up window right here, you can press the small computers here to make your first connection. Now, just to give you a very quick intro, uh, here you have, that's kind of hidden for me, but here you have the buttons to do different connections, to create new connections. So we'll do a create here and if you just do it like this, don't change anything, you'll get the default connection. Let me just save that. And if I double click this guy, I actually have a connection directly to my local Mongo database. That's all you have to do. So that's why I like this tool so much. It's very easy to get going with your local setup. We want more. We want to connect to the OpenShift server. So I'm going to make another connection here. I'm going to call it uh, OpenShift Production. It's just a name. It's just for me to actually um, get some kind of name for my OpenShift setup. Then I'm going to add localhost still. It's still localhost. I'm not going to write OpenShift anywhere. And that's because the port forward actually aligned this localhost for me right out of the box. So all I need to change is actually the port. So I'll change the name of the port here to this guy instead. 41836 in my case. Yours will of course be different probably. <clears throat> the next step I need to do is authenticate. So I need to perform authentication and the first thing it needs to know is the name of the database. Where do I find that? Because I wrote RHC apps in the beginning, I can actually up here see a list um, of all my apps and in my case the course planner app is the one I want to use and here it says the database name, the password and the username. I'm going to use all of those. So I'm going to paste in the database name, the username is admin in my case and then the password will be PSSH something, something, something. When you paste in the password, make sure you don't have a space in the end and a space in the front of it. It happens that when you paste, copy paste stuff that you end up with spaces. Just make sure they're not there. The last thing we need to choose is the authentication mechanism. In RoboMongo you have to choose MongoDB CR. That's just a way for us to connect and if you don't choose that you'll actually get an error when you try to connect. Let me just show you. Um, I'll just choose to scram SSH and it'll say authorization failed. So just make sure that you choose the Mongo one and do a test and hopefully it should look like this. If that's the case, you have a connection. You're connected, sorry, you have a connection set up to actually connect to your Mongo database. So let's save it, double click it, and now guess what? I'm actually on my actual Mongo database right here. So let's try and open the collections and open the user. I'll view the documents. And I have a few different views here. We'll play around with those for the next lesson. Right now I'll just do edit document. I right click my document, say edit document. And here I'll just change the name to Lars Bilde. I'll save it, 
Just to show we have a connection to the live environment, I'll go to my live environment right here. I'll do a refresh and notice the change here from last builder to actually last you builder. Perfect. I have access to my database. I can start manipulating the data on my live environment and we'll do that in the next lesson. So see you next time.